Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the OGA Pit Rainbow Six Qualifiers for Latin America. I'm certain that joining me once again is the lovely demo. We're getting into our second match of the day. It's going to be Black Dragons versus Supernova, and actually our final round of 16 game for Latin yeah, America. Yeah, it is. Yes, the last one that we have uh, up for grabs. And, well, it's going to be a pro league team against, yet again, another Challenger League side, something that we've seen common throughout nearly every single region. Uh, and this one is an all right placed Pro League team who finished fifth in the form of Black Dragons going against the last place Challenger League team in Brazil being Supernova, who didn't even win a match so far. Yeah, they had a couple draws, but yeah, it's not been yeah, a good draws, season for them at all. And uh, we're getting into the map bounce now, so exactly where we're going to be heading to. But yeah, I think on paper, this is going to be a slaughter. Maybe not as one sided as the last map we just had, but. Black Dragons have had an okay Pro League season. They're not too shabby at all, but Supernova have had an absolute disastrous Challenger League season, not being able to get one single win on the board. Let's see if they can redeem themselves here. So, because either way, they get relegated. So, you know, they, they cannot change their placings now. They're too far down in the standings. So, really, their next play day doesn't really matter for them. So, everything's kind of banking on for this, but Black Dragons have no more Pro League play days. They have no more LAN opportunities. So. Uh -huh. They've, they've got to bring it all for here. So, important match for both of these teams. Uh, Supernova will eliminate Villa immediately. What do you think of that? Uh, I think that's just a comfort ban, probably, for themselves. Uh, you know, you look at the only two draws that they actually managed to pick up this season. One of those was on Bank, which was... Uh, that was a 6-6 six -six draw going up against uh, Samorg, another team who we know inside of this competition as well, who we've already seen play. Uh, and yeah, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like the greatest thing. It was pretty standard in terms of the bans that match, uh, but still they had some tough times with it. The other one also being a bank draw as well. Uh, so they've played bank and those are the only ones they've actually managed to pick up points on. And I wonder if Black Dragons have read into that and have went ahead and go ahead and ban that map specifically, or will they try and, you know, target ban a map which hasn't been as strong for them? Because that could also be an option for them. I think Bank overall, and we were saying it last time as well, like, LATAM do love a lot of Bank, and they do tend to play a lot of Bank. I mean, ever kind of since Bank was in the map pool, we've seen LATAM teams consistently go there. It is going to be Clubhouse ban, actually, for Black Dragons so far as well. Potentially, as well, from Black Dragons, there's an element of not wanting to show too much, so that they, you know, later in the bracket, when they go through, if they go through, that, you know, they'll have a lot of stuff still in their uh -huh. back pocket to still... Bring Clubhouse will be banned out by them, and I'm kind of expecting Supernova just to pick up Bank right now. But you know that could be a mistake as well because Black Dragons are clearly going to see what's going on in Bank. That may be why they've let it go through as well because they want them to pick up Bank. But Supernova is actually going to pick Conch. Club and Bank have been like the only two maps that Black Dragon have played. Like they've played it a lot. Other ones, you know, they've had like two consulates, a coastline in there. Uh, but very rarely do we ever not see them play Bank or Clubhouse. And for them to ban Clubhouse right off the rip, which they had okay performances on, is a bit strange one. I think that Bank is just going to be locked in by Dragons. That's what I feel is about to be approaching because they have had some pretty solid wins yep. on bank across go. the way you know the beat teams like mibr and also team one and that who we know uh, we've seen them play as well and it wasn't kind of expected them being comfortable on that map specifically that's why they've played it a lot in pro league uh yeah it's it's pretty standard so far yeah pretty standard so, so far as you did say consulate and bank so far picked up here as a supernova i've now got the band to see where our decider will go to cafe is going to be banned out by Black Dragon. So either Coastline or Border. I feel like Border kind of suits Supernova a little bit more here in this kind of matchup. But really, we could go to either one. Maybe Supernova. I, I don't know. What do, what do you think about these? Dragons haven't played a single Border this season, mm. which is something to keep in mind. Uh, again, a Supernova's pick. Either way, they're biting the bullet off. Either map is like very like generic in how it's kind of played out. It's all about the frag heavies. And if Supernova know the Black Dragons, you know, they have better fraggers. And you, know, you look at the Black, Lag and, uh, Black Dragons lineup, you have players in there like Panico, who we know can kind of pop off. And even PZD, we've seen a veteran player. Everybody in Black Dragons has, you know, some kind of like big experience and like other teams as well. So they're kind of like a collection of like, different, you know, teams like Liquid and FaZe and, and NIP all kind of forming to make one team, isn't it? 
yeah, definitely a very, very experienced roster, but yeah, things things just not looking good for Supernova at all. It is going to be a border pick, however, his Coastline is going to be banned, so we're all, we'll see how that's going to go down. I think we kind of were expecting that border pick, but as you said, Black Dragons haven't gone to border at all, so we don't really know what to expect from them. Yeah, we exactly. did go to that decider, so and I think in a lot of these matchups as well, if it does go to that decider, we feel like the, the lesser team, the lesser known team, does have that opportunity to cause an upset. But we're going to head into the game now. We're going to head into map number one. It is going to be Consulate here. It's going to be Black Dragons versus Supernova. Well, the way I look at it is, generically, in these round of 16 games, we're expecting the big team just a 2-0. The only team who hasn't managed a 2-0 for LATAM in this side of the bracket has been MIBR. They were the only team who had to go to all three maps. Everything else was dominant from the professional team or the or the challenger team, the team that we expected to win. They won it outright as a 2-0. Oof. So many Thatcher bands. They just love Thatcher bands today. So, Thatcher will be eliminated by Black Dragons. Supernova will be left with their ban. There's going to be a Habana. Not the first time we've seen a Habana ban on Concha, but also Weirdly, not the first time we've seen a Thatch ban on Consulate either. Which, you know, is, is kind of out there. It doesn't really help you that much. You've, of course, got to get that vertical play regardless on Garage. And I just, I cannot see a situation where Thatcher really does help you. A Habana ban, I think, definitely does help you on that kind of console side take. And the admin side take, sorry. As we'll see an Echo ban bend out as well. So They must think they're playing Clubhouse. Maybe, maybe a Maestro ban here as well. But, Maestro, but Mira can also be pretty effective on Consulate in a couple of limited yeah. spaces. And there's and the mirror yeah. gun. Okay, so Maestro being up means that that garage is going to cause the attacks a lot of problems. You can basically put your Maestro cameras beneath the white van and beneath the white car, and you can essentially kill the attackers whenever they're outside of the breach, which is really annoying to deal with. And you have to either somehow get a pick from which can be really difficult because you have to prone on the floor and then you could be susceptible to someone like just simply peeking you but more times we see teams go above uh, and try and sledge above the maestro cameras which is the more kind of common way to go around it. and piano is like the main main room just for anything that goes on in console it is like the prime example of the linchpin of like everything that happens in a map uh, don't forget from Supernova, we do actually have a couple of experienced players as well. Revolts and FK1, kind of very experienced players across the Siege scene as well. They did play Pro League last season under Pain Gaming as well in Season 8 as well. And they've actually played an OGA Pit with Pain Gaming as well before. So they definitely, you know, they are experienced players of their own as well. But they've just not had a good season at all. And, your bombs from being you know, Supernova, this is now their opportunity to prove to themselves that and prove to the world that they are a Challenger League worthy team. Bomb located it's going to be an uphill battle for them, though, for sure. Black Dragons start out on the defensive. So Garage straight off the rip. No Maestro being chosen by Dragons either, which is strange. So they're going to go for uh, a much more roam favored and very flexible, fast and aggressive lineup that you're bringing whenever you see, uh, you know, no heavies whatsoever. That kind of leads you to believe that they're up for a bit of a fight and towards the top floor. Also, Wag, he will be playing the Bandit, but he's straight upstairs and not placing down his shock wires whenever they know there's no Thatcher. Surely that should just be like a go-to thing to at least deter anybody want to open up the wall. Yeah, I suppose, you know, you would think so. Like, you've got to put them down immediately, and there we go. It is going to go down. I think it was just making sure there's no, like, Twitch drone or anything like that to come through. But we'll see how Supernova wants to deal with all of this and how they want to start their attack. And hopefully he knows that was a mozzie drone that he did just spot out there in Visa. So, Black Dragons are expecting that kind of Visa side take to come down. But we see PZD and Live both up on this roam. Trying to hold in towards the top floor. Main goal as a roamer is to one, get kills, and two, waste time and utility. That's all you need to do. If you can do those two basic steps, your team should win the round. If you don't do them, and you kind of die early on throughout your course of your roam game, then that's where issues start to occur and your anchors then start to get a little bit angry at you. And they will be droned away and we'll start to try and slip off towards the second floor, but still trying to hold an aggressive position towards oh. the spiral. And yeah, that's unfortunate timing if you're gridlocking. Well played by Live to be able to pick up the pieces from a very poorly timed drone. 
Yeah, no, no info really coming out there on that Rome game coming out from Black Dragons, and no refrag coming out from Supernova so far. Things are not starting out too right well, and you know, losing your gridlock, not losing your only set of smokes, but you are losing a significant portion of your utility, both in the flank watch as well as your execute. So. I see Live holding on to copy here, expecting the peak, it takes him down! Oh my god, what a shot from Live! FK1 straight off the board, and now already finding ourselves in a 3v5. Supernova not looking too good right now. Just taking their time as it goes for Supernova. Whenever they know that there is still roamers, it's always going to be a tough one to try and shake off. Still haven't managed to open up Breach. They have put a lot of utility and time into Good. this clear out, but Live is just running rampant. He is going to be an operator and a player that I feel is going to show up time and time again in the kill feed and could be trying to single-handedly carry his team and just get this over and done with as quick as they can, which is, in general, LATAM fashion. I wonder if if Black Dragons go, like, free up, will they catch on and think, you know what, we're just better than this team, let's just spawn pick them, like last game? Oh, my nod, I'm going to move in. He's going to get GDN. Potentially to find, find another one as Live finds one, finds two, and that's the ace from Live. Blood Dragons completely shooting them down, but more importantly, Live in the air. And I do agree with you, Demo. I think we're just going to see Live constantly pop on the kill feed. Look at those reactions from him. Look at the flick. Look at the killing capability of that Jaeger. Flick of the wrist is how it goes, James. I know that you're very gangster, you're very hood. Mm -hmm. I know that, that you know, you're know you kind of into all that kind of stuff, aren't you? Yeah. You love your rap music. Yeah, I am very hood, it's true. You know, look at you, you're a king. <laughs> Moving through into round number two, however, we are going to be going to a console office and meeting room defense, commonly known as Projector. We'll see how Supernova want to deal with this, bringing the same lineup that they have done previously, but they have to shut down live, and I think that's just become immediately obvious. It's going to be tough, though, whenever someone is feeling very confident. And the big thing about Siege is, well, really any eSport, 40% is how well you can play the game and your general mechanics. And then 60% is your mental stability. Mentality in eSports is exactly the same like regular sports. Tilt is a massive thing that every single player, and honestly, any gamer will suffer tilt. You will always go through that portion. And if you don't know what tilt is, Till is basically getting angry whenever you believe you shouldn't lose. So if some, if you like lose a game where you feel as if you should have won, that's whenever you get tilted. And there's different kind of periods of tilt. You know, you get the 45 degree tilt into 90 and then a full 180 where you literally start smashing your desk. We've seen that before in esports where teams have started to get tilted. Uh, and it's all about the mentality and how well you can collect yourself and how well you can pull yourself through. If things aren't looking well and you're starting to feel as if you're getting tilted, how fast can you try and pull your way out of that? And even like mentality factors off, you know, choking is a massive thing. You look at different esports where there is, you know, coaches, you know, men mental coaches that assist your team. We don't really have any of those in Siege yet. I don't think do we have any Liquid therapists. Has one. Okay, Liquid so has there's one. one, only one. I'm still surprised that Canadian doesn't have one, to be honest. Poor guy. Mm. I feel as if he should need one. Well, let's get into round two and see exactly how this is going to go down. Same lineup coming out from Supernova that they bring on their first attack, and we'll see exactly what they want to do with this. But to me, this just screams an admin take into a console push. It's basically like two sets of smokes coming out. Yeah, you have a lot of utility from Supernova. You have the gridlock track stingers, you have Sophia to eliminate Maestro cameras that could have potentially been lurking around, but Black Dragons not opting for an operator. The only heavy they'll be having is the dock. The dock could be great for top floor. You think about how wide it is now open, and whenever you're basically setting up to have live frag out, if you give him that support and he does get down and you manage to get a clutch stim pistol, that could be the make or break for a round for you. Uh, and I just think, you know, whenever there's Capital still on the board, we've seen where players have gotten downed, uh, just literally got downed, and the fire's ended. They're sitting there not being able to move. Stim pistol can be like the, the make or break. Fire's coming down from Dimitri to try and make something happen in copy. Let's see what he can do here. They know where Live is and they're constantly pinging him out and droning him around that copy area. That's Panico. Let's try and go for his peep. Just quickly reinforce the barricade yet again to get control of the bathroom once more. But Live has completely fallen off, it looks like. And he's going to go for that long flank indeed. Thermite charge is going to go down onto that long angle from Admin straight into the doorway of Projector. But Black Dragon is still holding on, and they're just wasting time, and they seem pretty content to do so. Drone up. Attackers have located just hanging on for the meantime. 
Supernova. They have got control of what they wanted. Now they need to carry out with their second execute, which will be onto the main bomb site. No picks yet, minute to go, no utility being wasted. And Black Dragons also, they haven't had to waste anything. They still have C4s, they still have smokes. And it's just gonna come down to see how well they get the kills alive as went for the jump out, which honestly, that's the play, because that's the capital. That is all the utility that they wanted to have for being able to go for the plant. Now gone, and Black Dragons at this stage, I feel as if they have it in the bag. And there's still smokes up from Supernova, but their attack is stalling out quite heavily. Nitro is going to go out from below from PZD, but able to find the kill just yet. But Revolts will find one with the nade GDN. More nades are going to be coming out. That's going to clear out the shield up at a long desk as Nod and Revolts both move in. They find frags of their own, but it's getting shut down by Panico on the long angle. He knows exactly where this push is going to come from. He lets Zofia get into sight, however, Nod and pushing down long desk. That's Diffuser down and out of it as FK1 pushes all the way through Connector. Panico's going to know this. He misses. But oh my, my god! The shot comes out when FK1 closes out the round. That was a complete throw from Panico. Why did he peek? There was two seconds. He didn't have a defuser. What could he have done? Nothing. Ah. Ah, it's, it's not good. Absolute throw from Black Dragons coming through there. But Supernova able to close out the round and put themselves up on the board. But Live is still 6 and 1 right now with the console office and meeting room defense yet again from Black Dragons. Let's see how they want to handle this. They definitely need a little bit more delay here. Something we didn't mention as well, that with the Habana ban, it's going to make impact tricking way easier. Yeah, it will. Um, I don't really see, though, an option for Fermite to get up in the wall. There's not really a whole lot of impact tricking you can do in this bomb site to begin with, and really anything on Consulate. Impact tricking doesn't really exist simply because the art of the Fermite doesn't exist to begin with. Uh, it just feels if it comes down to how well you can actually utilize the utility and the different angles you can coordinate with. That balcony is like the main thing you need to try and control. Live did make the main play, and that was jump out the window to eliminate said man on balcony. But to be, to be real for Supernova, as soon as that does happen, they need to be quicker on being able to rotate somebody there. And that comes down to their time management. Whenever that Capital did get picked off, there was about 30 seconds left. I wouldn't say there was that much time for them to really go for that play, but it would have been like the ideal situation if they had a bit more. So perhaps clear out admin should be their main thing they need to focus on. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Um, they are still bringing this really heavy utility based lineup, but I feel like at this point they might be better going for a console side take because while they did actually win their attack last time with an admin side take, it was not easy for them, and that whole long desk push got shut down really, really quickly. So, potentially it would be better to just go for that admin side take, but live is just not going to let it happen. Already going to go for the spawn peak and already taking that gridlock off, off, up off the board, and we've seen Capital and Gridlock go down really early on both rounds now. Gridlock, utility. Um... It's helpful whenever there is potential flanks from Black Dragons. We've seen them before roam towards the mid floor and nobody from Supernovas had any interest in taking care of them. Uh, could help, especially whenever, you know, they lost the Capital. Smokes are really crucial for it. Uh, the last round... Losing a big operator who has a lot of impact is always going to be tough to bring it off. It could have been worse. They could have lost an entry fragger, which I, I kind of feel would make it even more difficult because then you just start slowing down and the time gets away with with you. And whenever Supernova struggled with their kind of time management the last round, if they did lose their main fragger, then that could have really been issues. Oh, and how do you lose that? Yeah, how did... More question, how did Sophia win those? Because she should never be able to do that, yet she did. Still a damage trade-off, though, so it should be an easy pickup really for anybody Black Dragon from live, he is still just ruthless in this hunt. Yeah, he has been pretty ruthless indeed. Lots of drones are still coming out, however, I believe we still have a mozzie drone up on the board as well. Live, again, on this hunt, as you said, pretty ruthless so far, but he has managed to bring it into a full V4, which is about halfway through into the round now. And Supernova, still with this very slow take, but they have managed to get control of Admin now, and Live prepping his runouts as well from Constant's side. Again, time, time. Supernova can't get enough of that. And they're really slacking on it. A minute to go, they've only just started to try and look towards taking Vend machines. 
Yeah, you need to get things under wraps as quick as you can. You look at a team like Empire, who clears out that admin by two minutes, and they have so much time for prep and set up to go for. The Bataban now will try and kick in, and will try and hurt Supernova uh, this time around, because typically we would see Habana inside of the copy room, open in towards the A bomb site to eliminate that, specifically where Smoke is playing. And since they don't have the Habana, it just means that Smoke becomes so much more of a powerhouse, and it puts a lot of pressure on your man who's outside of Balcony. Definitely does. Live still playing up onto where he can through onto projector and the connector. As PZD goes for the flank up onto Spiral and see what he could do from there. But he's running out of time here now for Supernova to try and make a move. The long distance push is getting shut down by PZD. He's holding out GDN, throwing out the smokes, denying that projector push as well. 15 seconds left to go on the clock. Smokes have gone out. PZD goes for the peak, but from below, he almost got flanked, but he takes it out. Revolts goes down. Norton goes down. Kavik goes down. It's all down to FK1, but he can't let it happen as Black Dragon stick round number three with the double kill coming out from GDN right there at the end. Time. That's all it is. Other time not on their side, and they need to try and get in his good books as soon as they can. So for Black Dragons, they are great at their positioning of their crossfires and their kind of duo ships that they have going for them. I like the aggressive nature that both Jaeger and Mozzie kind of took for that round, being able to grab the bull by the horns and say, we're just going to dominate. We're not going to let you to get anything that you don't already have. You're just going to stay in admin. You're going to pile up. You're not going to be able to rotate towards mid floor. You're not going to have any rotations because we'll be there to stop you. We tried to see a spiral rotate come in from the man who pushed in three tellers. Oh, look, there was a guy to stop him. If there was somebody else there in Spiral, uh, you know, you could have had like a crossfire going, which I'm curious to, if you know somebody's going to try and take Spiral, but it hasn't been droned, and you have a suspicion someone might be there, that's where you need to coordinate with the guy beside Vendor Machines to get that pinch and get that crossfire. So what I'd like to know as well is that the last time that I casted FK1, he was just FK1, but now he's FK1111, so yeah. he's had a bit of an upgrade. He has, he's a new model. Doesn't look as if that model's helping, though. No, it hasn't really helped him too much, it would seem. But we'll see how round number four goes underway. We're going to be going downstairs to a basement garage hold coming out from Black Dragons. We'll have a look at what Supernova want to do here. They brought the Jackal this time. So I, think, I think this is a good call from them. The floor. Um, Particularly if they can shut down live early on. I suppose it could help them with the Rome game. But even at that, they have not been interested in trying to clear out the roamers. They have had no attempt in doing so in their past three rounds. So that could also be like a big thing that they kind of lack is being able to actually give them a reason to go for and bringing in the Jackal. Of course, has the smokes as an added bonus. There's actually six smokes on the board of Supernova, but not a whole lot of soft destruction. The only thing they have there is the two shotguns on Jackal and Gridlock, and even at that, it's risky to go for. You definitely would like to see a buck being picked up for this bomb site specifically if they knew it was going to be garage, which they know it was open, and they should have expected that, because he just makes such light work of opening up everything above garage. Really influential opera. You have the nades to go with it, and the C8 is a beast of a gun, and just the fire rate and everything going with it. If you have a good buck main, he's typically a fragger that you'd love to have. I don't know, just missing a lot of pieces of the puzzle for Supernova. Yeah, they are missing quite a lot of those pieces of the puzzle, as you did indeed say. We're moving in now to that garage defense, but one minute into the clock, and I just don't see how much control we've actually now established from Supernova. It just seems like the time is just constantly an issue for them. They're moving very, very slowly through the map. They need to be quick with this, and, you know, I honestly feel like the Thatcher ban is affecting this quite a lot as well, and I did make the point, like, the last time we saw a Thatcher ban on Consulate, it can slow it down a little bit. Like, yes, you're going to try and get that piano control anyway. You could try and force the bandit off that way. But if you wanted to go for a quicker push, you're not allowed to do that now. You have to get that vertical control earlier on. Loads of info. Mid floor control has been taken by Supernova. But Black Dragons, they do have a myriad of C4s ready to go. You have the Bandit C4, Valk, and Mozzie all locked and loaded. Well, there's the first one gone, and will be Dimitri off the table. And Live also just goes ahead and destroys the gridlocks with no real care in the world. And he just falls back now. And since that gridlock's gone, 
there will be no way to recover up that spiral. And that does give another rotation option to Supernova, or Black Dragon, should I say, and Supernova, the need to try and put an end to that. And oh. there goes another one flying off to the moon. Revolts goes. FK1 does get a refrag, however, onto said Jaeger, but I feel as if the damage has been done. Yeah, it definitely has been. FK1 trying to do his best here to try and push down Yellow Stairs and see what's going to be going on. Norden going for those drones deep into sight and. Black Dragon is still holding on, however, to try and shut this all down. 30 seconds left to go on the clock, and again, that time is just such a massive issue here. This execute really does have to start to come down. PZD moving through onto White Band. The plant starts to go down. PZ pushes all the way up, and he shuts it down. Oh my god. Nice double kill coming out from PZD, and one from Black to finish it off for Black Dragons there. Just line up, and like target practice, that was simple for Valkyrie. Black Dragons, they push on in. 3-1 uh, lead. But they do have to go for uh, the third bombsite choice for them, which will be their lobby. This is going to be new territory for both teams to see how Black Dragons will set up. I expect a top floor hold from them, along with the roamers that we know they have. Live, not on the Eger this time around. Instead, going for the Mozzie. Uh, curious to why he isn't playing with the 416. Curious to why there isn't a Jaeger to begin with. Maybe they have something up their sleeves that they kind of need this specific lineup, which I can understand. Maestro is the first time being brought by Black Dragons. They give them that information on site that they have been lacking uh, nine times out of ten. I feel still feel that Doc and a very open bomb site can be great for arriving teammates mm -hmm. across the way. Valkyrie, for more information for Cans, we know she is the queen of consulates. Uh, Mozzie has kind of been like their go-to operator for like everything. Again, he is that jack of all trades, master of none, just fits anything you need to, and then smoke is a kind of a given because you need some form of denying access to front door. It just seems how crazy to me, like I know this is a kind of a meta discussion, I guess, but like Supernova, previously Pain Gaming, they played uh, Pro League Season 8 with Yuna as well, as well as OGA Season 1, and they, they were looking way better there, and now it's just completely fallen apart. I mean, we still have um, FK1, we still have Norden, we still have Revolts from the main roster. But other than that, like, ever since they lost Yuna, this roster has just completely fallen from heaven. They got relegated from Pro League last season. They finished last in Challenger League this season. It just seems like this has just been a constant downfall for Supernova. As I said, this is kind of their opportunity to try and like prove to them that like, yes, we are a decent roster. They're against a pretty decent team in Black Dragons, and yeah, it just seems like this story is, doesn't have a great ending to it so far. But Black Dragons, you know, still in that commanding league. It's not all over Supernova. They can gain at least one more round of this tank. I think they can still keep themselves in it. But overall, things are looking too good for them. I think, yeah, as you said, we've been saying the entire map, the timing has not been good from Supernova. An interesting po uh, point that you kind of brought up about the whole players kind of falling off compared to what they used to be. We've seen this in like, you know, every single thing. Just people don't keep up with meta. There is different players in different regions that all of a sudden just disappeared. You know, there's players that we think back and look at and say, oh, you remember him? You know, they're a memory now. They're not here in the now. They just vanish. And if Supernova, have a few of those players which just cannot keep up with playing Siege anymore, then we could be thinking back, oh, do you remember Supernova, that team that could be by Black Dragons? Mm. Yeah, no, we could be we could be looking back like that. But just about a minute into the round now, and not a lot of progress still made by Supernova. They do have control of admin to be fair to them. They have plenty of utility still remaining to try and push this all out projector, but they need to get this vertical control if they want to bring something in here. Just playing out of coffee. We'll see the AQ trying to do some work as FK1 trying to push up here as well and establish some kill holes to try and get a kill here. But live he is going to be peeking into this, but it's going to fall off. Interesting that Black Dragons have not brought any Jaeger for this. It is intriguing that you still don't have the Jaeger, but like we explained, they probably have operators that they feel are more suited compared to having the ADSs. Oh, and oh. well, whenever you can frag out with the MP5, then who cares about 416 as Wag will continue on, and another one carries the line up, and Buck just barely gets away with that one. Should have been dead, but isn't. And this is great crossfires again, being established by Black Dragon, which is what we've talked about before. Cab will, however, oh. get a double kill for him, so there's two for the price of one, but still that Maestro upstairs being able to lock it down with the Alda. PZD, don't need to peek, bro. Just sit back, relax, and fall back to Panico. Yeah, PCD also has a Nitro up as well, and we've seen a decent amount of info game coming out from Blood Dragons pretty much throughout the map, both having the Mozzie, the Maestro, and the Valkyrie up here. So PZD should be able to play below with that Nitro. And as you said, he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't 
can just chill. Also, interesting point, that's Cab now finally back on the scoreboard with his first two kills of the map. Yeah. Execute now for Supernova. They look as if they're going to still pressure that top floor while also looking for the plant towards the front desk. But there's a smoke. This is what we kind of discussed with the anchor that you need to have to deny access to the front. That C4 goes amiss. Now, Panico, so many flashes oh being thrown at him. It's like a candela has went off right inside of Antichamber. Last smoke gets tossed in. Oh, nearly got the hit fire, but IQ has pushed straight on in. Now it's a 2v3. Revolt does eliminate the Maestro and PZD. All to do. Winnable. Looking at the HP stats from Supernova, the air jab though goes off, they know exactly where he is, and this is one of the hardest retakes that you can possibly do is the front door. You know, you also need to eliminate the IQ before you even get to the Fermite, who for some reason pushes in, gives himself away, oh! and that's it down. PZD has pulled it out to the massive throw of Supernova. Oh my god, what a disaster. But yeah, definitely very winnable there at the end because Everyone was just so low HP. All it takes is a few shots. And PZD. PZD also playing that very smart by he shot open the piano door so that, you know, he's like guessing the guy in antechamber to see where he's going to peek. But yeah, Thermite could have played that so much more patiently. And no, no, he could have done literally anything but that right there. He could have done anything but that. Why would he run in? What? What was he fearing? What was he fearing? Absolutely the, nothing. The only thing I can think of is that he moved up to try and cover circle while the IQ went to go cover piano. But, but yeah, why? no, it's true. It shouldn't be. Like, doing what's that. the point? The only as soon as that plant gets down, you turn into a defender and you protect that bomb as if it is the only thing you care about in life. Why run in and give yourself away? Not a great start. Not a great start here for Supernova. They desperately need this round if they want to keep themselves in the race. But I think at 5-1, most teams would call the map done. Pulse is going to be 6 fix here from WAG. And Live going to be back on his old Jaeger. So no Mozzie being brought. I think that's a new one for Blood Dragons. I think they brought a Mozzie every single round except this round. And it's been pretty effective, Defenders honestly. We've seen a lot of Mozzie drones being put up. Attackers. We also saw as well, um, there was that mozzie drone that was sat on the bottom of the window in Admin, and it really slowed down everything from Supernova because they were using like nades and the fear charges and impacts to try and get that mozzie drone destroyed. And they wasted so much time with like three people outside of Admin trying to get this mozzie drone. And it, yeah, like stuff like that can really slow you down. It can, it uh, sure can, but Black Dragons, they do a full rotation. They take three bomb sites in a row. That does unlock the top four for them once again. We have seen Supernova win this before. It was the second round, the only round that they've won. But can they recreate that? Third time, uh, the third round, should I say, for Black Dragons is, it was pretty standard in terms of how they kind of held their consulate uh, top floor holds. There wasn't really a whole thing Supernova could do with the positioning that we've discussed that Black Dragons do oh so well. Pulse has been brought into the fray things, and this is great early information. And once again for Supernova, for the third time for the top floor, they will be looking for an admin. So Yellow Stairs is completely off the menu for them. Uh, and Black Dragons, they have set up appropriately by having the Pulse below to feed this information live in PCD now inside of admin. I, I always feel it's so risky going up front, go, going for the, you know, come at me kind of approach in towards happen. So risky for defenders. Yeah, it definitely is. And he's going to hop up on some battle box and see what he can do there. But Wag just giving Coming, so much information here and completely slowing down this attack right now. Just sat in the corner of metal box here as well as PZD holding on to the opposite corner. And they're taking so many drones off the border here as well, but PZD is unable to find the next drone here. ADS is going to start to get burned Four as well. The windows. And there, yeah, just so many on the windows, but there we go. Live, he's going to find one of them and gets back onto that metal box as well. And they're just wasting so much time. PZD desperately trying to look for another frag here as he finds yet another drone. There's just so much drones, so much utility, and just so much time wasted and not a single frag for Supernova yet. Whenever you attack Admin, oh you just don't all repel on East. One of you has to go to the south window while one covers the balcony jump out. This is how this works. It's not complicated, yet Supernova are making it difficult for themselves. The only people that are tripping up Supernova is their own feet. 
Black Dragons are just happy enough to sit back and let Supernova do their thing and punish them where they see fit. This is dreadful from Supernova. They've just, they don't know what to do anymore. Their heads are fried. Yeah, it's not looking too good for them at all. Not in wide peaks, but gets shut down. That's diffuser down. That's the thermite off the board as well. This looks like round over for Supernova right now, but they're going to try and bring it in as PZD just find one. It's all down to revolts in a 1v5 to try and bring it in. Does eventually deal with Wag on the pulse on benches, but insanely just gets traded. And Black Dragon sick round of a 6 and at a 5-1. I think this is looking like a clean sweep right now. Yeah, uh, I don't see Supernova coming back from this. They have just gone worse, honestly, by the rounds that have went in. You know, their second round was their only highlight, and just that round number six kind of summed them up. Two people on the one and zeros. This is Supernova's map pick as well. So, uh, yeah, it's not great. And Bank still to come. <laughs> and that's like Black Dragon's map. Yeah, Which yeah. is the scary part, isn't it? Well, I mean, Supernova have, have they've drawn there a couple times, so uh, there's potential, I think, but yeah, not looking too good at all. Black Dragon's with a clear intent of how they want to play this by bringing the Lion and the Dokubi as well. I wonder if this Lion's getting its sex fixed. Nope. We seem all pretty content with our lineup here. Nope, there we go. IQ getting its sex fixed. I think that's a good sex pick. On the Nomad. I think you, know, you look at this lineup and you don't see a Valkyrie and you're like, okay. We don't need the IQ. Just bring a Nomad. Stop the Attackers runouts. Need to locate and defuse bombs. We'll be a garage hole straight off the rip for Supernova. So similar to what Black Dragons did, their lineup does include Akaid, which is an operator that was not chosen by Black Dragons. They picked up Bandit a few times, but that was really it. They went for a much more fast and furious lineup compared to a, a heavy, we'll say. And also Legion being brought in. So perhaps fearing Black Dragons with the aggression that they could bring. And whenever there is Lion and a Doka B, Hmm, that does lead you to believe we could see a quick rush, but with the lack of free speed for Black Dragons, it kind of then turns you away from that. It could be a much more slow, but then a heavy sight execution, a very fast kind of ending to the game. Yeah, um, I'm going to guess this is either like a backside take or they're going to go garage and the line and no, try and run it. No, I think it's going to be front. I, I think the Black Dragons are smart enough to know that backside pushes don't work because they're just it's just not good because there's really nothing that offers you apart from two doorways that can be easily stopped by lesions and smokes and yeah. barbed wire, just crossfires, everything in, in office. It's just going to be, I think, slow for Black Dragons. They're, they're not a dumb team. They're very smart and methodical in how they've kind of been playing. You look at their defense, all of their positioning was to a T, and now they open up the garage and already picking off skulls, and one of them, more importantly, being a smoke, and they may just look for it, because there's a Dokubi call being brought in along with the E1D, and now Black Dragons, they tried to execute in. They have lost one, and only two are down. There's PZD. He also falls, and all of a sudden, this has turned horrendous for Black Dragons. The Wistan did come in, though, from Sophia and straight away has picked up a kill, but still 2v3. And this is looking winnable now for Supernova with a C4 still in the back pocket of Dimitri. It's winnable, but I honestly just believe as long as Live is still alive and Blood Dragons, they can always just find that entry frag. It's a 3v2, but you are perfectly right, Demo. They do still have that Nitro up on the board. Diffuser, however, is down in sight. Supernova hopefully are aware of this. Uh, Leech and Mines are going to get triggered on this entry. Wag trying to find his entry of his own as Leech Line is going to go out. E1D is getting it extracted instead of Wag moves all the way in but gets shut down. That's not a great start as Dimitri and Revolts both pick up kills on their own. It's all down to live to try and bring this in. Very, very low HP indeed, but the prone angle underneath the white van will shut him down. Okay, so Black Dragons. They opened up the wall, so they played it slow, what we were expecting. And then they got the opening pick, and that's where they went, okay, let's just try and push in. The only downside of that is that Nomad was not in a position to help her team whatsoever. She was still, like, set up Nomad flight traps. However, whatever she was doing towards that front side of the map, she was in no position to help the team. That's where they need to realize and say, wait till everybody's here. There was a severe lack of drones coming in as well, perhaps trying to play off the fact that, oh, we have the Doka being lion, that's going to be our information. But if someone's lying prone in yellow stairs, you're probably not going to, A, see the guy on the lion charge because he's standing still, and B, you probably won't hear the Doka be call throughout all of the other noises that's happening all around you. 
Yeah, that is that is true. Good six pick from GDN there from the thermite onto the uh, thermite. So bit of a switching up there as he goes through. Need to locate and Still, fire. things looking very very good for Black Dragons. All they need is just a couple of attack rounds. We'll see if that does come to fruition here. As we'll see an upstairs hold coming out from Supernova after a successful defense of the basement. I think um, from Black Dragons there was like a little bit of miscoordination on where the Lions positioning should be during that last round when they rushed in and they didn't have control of the yellow stairs and I think that was just the one critical thing that just put them down. Hopefully there's a bit better coordination here. And I like the Capitao in the line. Ten seconds left before insertion. So Dragons knows it's going to be an upstairs. So they've kind of sacked off the Dokkabi Lion combination that they have attempted instead replace that with a Capitao and a Buck. So a lot more versatile use utility uh, compared to what, you know, a Lion and Dokkabi bring, which is literally just for rushes and room clear outs. Whereas, of course, Capitao bolts we know are great for sanction off different areas that you don't want defenders dealing with. And Buck has that skeleton key. They can even go downstairs and try and utilize the verticality that still exists on Consulate where you can open open up beneath different players and uh, whenever a ban is gone and that very pesky angle in towards meeting room that can't get open because you don't have that range anymore to open up the quad wall you could use your buck as a substitute to eliminate somebody in meeting room which will alleviate a lot of pressure for the potential jump in through the balcony uh, but instead they're looking for the yellow take so this is going to be uh, very well executed, I expect, from Black Dragons. They have everything set up for it. They have to burn ADSs and try and get the capital bolts in. Supernova, though, they have geared towards admin a lot more. So now I'm curious to see if they do possess, you know, a bit of brains behind them to rotate and try and put more emphasis on defending yellow. They have got the threats coming out from below as well as the nitros coming out there. But Revolts, yeah, as you say, looking to gear their defense towards now yellow and that console side take. So pests are getting launched out onto different corners instead. Those drones are going to be coming out into the bathroom area. They're going to know there's someone in there. Flashbangs are going to have to try and burn the ADS right now, but it's not going to be needed really as PZD is. Should be able to just trap the smoke in here and just completely lock him out with the fire bolts. Oh, does it catch him on the run out? But there we go. You should be able to get shut down effectively. That is no one in the smoke off the board. You should be able to push up onto yellow now, but we do see the threat coming out from the Valkyries from below. But PCD is going to make sure that none of that can happen. We do still have FK1 on that Jaeger, still downstairs, now pushing benches. Very heavy roam game coming out from Supernova. It is, but it's not giving an impact. Your C4 isn't even below. You know, what's Jaeger supposed to do if they're in the bomb site? Well, rotate up yellow where they're gonna clearly have flank rotations? Their priorities are all around the place. They're doing things back to front rather than front to back. And well, now it's a landslide for Black Dragons. They will take five players to do this. And they will try and keep everybody alive as long as they can. And FK1, he can just try his best, but I don't think his best will be good enough. And yeah, just another round for Black Dragons, which looked clinical. Their setup and everything in between that was great. They had a clear indication of what they wanted to do compared to Supernova, and their attacks were at points we really questioned. Oh, FK1 trying to win the duel there, but no, it's going to be from below. He just managed to pick, pick up. No, sorry. Fanico moved up through onto that long desk and take him out. There's just so many crossfires established there that, yeah, there was absolutely no way that he was getting out of that one. But Blood Dragons, yeah, putting themselves onto match point now. Looking really clinical throughout this matchup so far. And yeah, would like to remind everyone, as I did last round, this is Supernova's map pick. So not looking too good for them. Moving on to bank, I think potentially we could see a little bit better coordination coming out from Supernova, but yeah, I know things are not looking good here at all. They're going to have to find four rounds in a row on their defense if they want to bring this into overtime, but that is not looking likely right now. So your console office and meeting room defense to start off with here. Yet again, as we move to a pulse instead this time. I like the pulse pick here. Yeah, pulse is like B-Tech, basic, standard, but great uh, for this map. He can, of course, possess that tool of seeing you through walls, and there is a lot of stuff you can really pick up in towards Defenders, that server side. If you play right in attackers. the basement, you can see the spawns of where the attackers come from. You can see them repel up to windows. You can even see them through not only the mid floor, but also see them through the top floor as well. So you really get a great indication of where everybody's positioned. I'm a big fan of balls. Always have been. Uh, just like the baldy head, you know? Like the just want to go and smack it. 
just <laughs> right in the back, you know? I just hope my Andrews isn't listening to this. That would be fun. <laughs> but we're going to move in now. Of course, match point to Black Dragons. They just need to find one of these next four rounds if they want to bring in the Five map. And again, Supernova quite set up for this admin side take as well. See, Valkyrie cameras are going to go outside there. I, like, the roam game last time was weird. I think their kind of intention was to put the Jaeger downstairs with the Valkyrie. And that they would play together and the Jaeger would be able to protect the Valkyrie with the uh -huh. Nitro. And they would be able to play off that. But the Valkyrie rotator would be able to get caught out and the Jaeger was kind of left all alone. and wasn't able to do too much about that. Hopefully, if they do go for that roam game again, it'll be a little bit successful. Because Black Dragons just didn't do a roam clear at all. And honestly, why do you, you don't need to really on this upstairs attack. No, you don't, don't need to at all. And uh, it's just priorities, I feel, is the big thing that Supernova are really lacking, uh, just in general, of everything that they're trying to do. They don't have a clear indication of their actual game plan, and you always need to go into your round carrying out an objective. You always have to look at it and think, okay, so we're bringing these operators. Why are we bringing them? Okay, we bring them to put them in this position. Why do we put them in this position to do this? Okay, why do we do this to stop them from doing that? That should be like your full game plan whenever you're thinking of your strategies. And if you don't really put as much effort and think about why you're actually doing these things, then that's where issues will start to begin. You look at Black, Black Dragons. They have everything fought out methodically. Oh. They have everybody in the exa exact positions they need to have. You know, you have White coming in as an entry. You know he has a great shot. He has the air jab where he wants to try and get in quick and try and sanction off all the flanks and still pick up frags while it goes for him. And even Dimitri, he's low HP as, as well. And Black Dragons, they are just, just running away with it. But it's expected though from this team. We expect the Pro League teams to dominate the non-Pro League teams. And Black Dragon as well, they're living up to our to our expectations. They really are. The only team that kind of let us down was MIBR, the only team we did drop a map. Yeah, they definitely are living up to our expectations. Damn Panico is going to move all the way through into the bathroom and see what he can do. Just open it all up. And this is looking pretty good for Black Dragon so far. Even better now as Live moves in and gets his frag for revolts from below. He's going to be able to Nitro out Wagon slowly bring things back into the favor of Supernova, but that's not good at all. Revolts does not have a Nitro to blow to deny this plant right now. Revolts tries to push up yellow, but no, it's going to get shut down. And Blood Dragon take round number nine, and they take the first map, seven to two, and just just a complete slaughter, really, there at the end. It's just Black Dragons on top of the game. They had everything going for them. A couple of little hiccups, but hey, we'll let them off of it. As they take map number one, Consulate, firmly in the grasp of the dragons but we still have to see them go one more map and that will be bank come back after the break
predict the outcome, win the game. Get live coverage and schedules for your favorite tournaments. Analyze, predict, and vote to gain points. Compete with other esports fans and climb the leaderboards. Straight. Everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android.